Europe has been entering crisis mode for years at this point, and every single crisis point is followed by another before the continent is ever able to recover. Growth has been stagnant in all the wealthiest countries for well over a decade, and the 2008 financial collapse never saw its following recovery. GDP has been propped up only by increasing population through mass immigration, but that has done its job in forcing wages down at the behest of the mass employers on the continent. Only now, the people of Europe are fed up with immigration and the huge spike in crime rates it's driven. The Ukraine war came and government funding flooded east, oil and gas on the other hand stopped flowing altogether and inflation rose as the energy crisis took hold. And as if all that alone wasn't enough, European governments have been regulating their stars into inoperability, meaning innovation on the continent is now entirely dead. But Europe is now seeing a major reaction in its politics as a direct result of the repeated failures of governments all across Europe. And that alone is going to bring a new massive problem that we've barely seen start. And when this crisis reveals itself, everything in Europe will change and the global economy will feel the effects as well. Now, on the surface, Europe has had a vibrant, thriving democracy for years. Multiple parties, left and right wing parties receiving votes that align perfectly with the views of those actually voting. And as problems started to emerge from left wing policies, people started voting a little bit more right wing. Italy's Maloney was elected into power in what was seen as a massive win for the resurgent right, and the Conservative Party had been in power in the United Kingdom for well over a decade at this point. But these right-wing parties didn't actually have any right-wing policies. Maloney's entire campaign was based around stopping mass immigration and illegal immigration from North Africa, and while she spoke fierce words, her actions were decidedly different. Those boats are still making their way across the Mediterranean. The deportations have been as slow as ever, and Italy is exactly as it was before Maloney was elected. They have a right-wing party in name only. The United Kingdom didn't have such an emotive election cycle, though. Instead, the Conservatives just steadily won each election that came their way, and thankfully, that's about to change. But with 14 years of a right-wing party in power, would you expect immigration to increase by almost 1,000%? Would you expect freedom of speech to be removed from the country as people are put in jail for tweets? Would you expect child rapists to escape prison sentences and violent criminal migrants to avoid deportation? And would you expect the country's tax burden to rise to its highest since 1948? Of course you wouldn't expect that, because the Conservatives are supposed to be a right-wing party, but they're right-wing in name only, and this is the fundamental political problem that has plagued Europe for the last decade. Democracy is a lie. These elections are won by promises which are swiftly forgotten about as the country moves slowly but steadily leftwards, regardless of what the people want. But the Conservatives in the UK were always the establishment party, and they never served the people who elected them, so voters have changed their ways, and they're moving towards new parties who they hope will follow through on their promises. But these aren't typical politicians who they're now voting for. They're upstarts, they're upset citizens and people who have no allegiance to the globalist agenda. The UK is seeing an election in weeks and Reform, a party that didn't even exist five years ago, is sitting as the third largest party in the country with polls which always skew leftwards and Reform is nipping at the heels of the Conservatives as well. France just saw elections that may well change their country forever where Marine Le Pen's right-wing party won more votes than any other party in the country period. Now another election is coming in the left's attempt to overturn that result as best they can. The Belgian Prime Minister resigned in tears after seeing his party decimated with the resurgence of right-wing voters once more. One thing here is wildly clear to anyone willing to see the truth. The West is skewing rightwards and they're voting that way as well. Elections will continue to pile in and the establishment will continue to lose, seeing their political power slowly eroded away. But here's the problem that no one is seeing coming. The globalists aren't just going to let this happen without a fight. In fact, we've already seen them stage a literal coup to remain in power and it happened in the UK not so long ago. Maybe this rings a bell. The Conservative Party sees their leader resign and a leadership vote is held for party members to decide the next leader of the party and thus the Prime Minister. The usual establishment put their names forward, namely Rishi Sunak, but with the charisma of a wet paper bag, he obviously fails and doesn't win the election. So a certain woman comes into power and plans on moving at least the economy, if not the social status, towards the right. Lower government spending, lower taxation, something the vast majority of people wanted and the economy gravely needed. But suddenly, overnight the markets turn to panic, hedge funds sell off all their British stocks and bonds and a minor financial crisis erupts, one just large enough to force the new prime minister out of power to be replaced, not through any democratic process whatsoever, 
but by grabbing the globalist Rishi Sunak and placing a crown upon his head. Of course, some people will hear this and insist it's just a mindless conspiracy theory, but the evidence is clear as day. This happened and it will happen again. As France moves to elect Le Pen, as the polls suggest, the globalists will not sit idly by and let it happen. They can't risk their precious cheap labor pool being shut down, and so they will act. What exactly will they do? That's something I genuinely don't know, but it will happen. Likely, the EU will play its part, business magnates will put up a fuss and threaten to leave the country. Stocks may well fall and bond yields may move sky high. Already, we're seeing Antifa roaming the streets in France, targeting any building or business racist enough to fly the French flag in France, and it will only escalate from here. Belgium has seen two elections over the last few days, and the two largest parties who won the most votes fit directly into that category of right-wing parties intent on actually enacting right-wing policies. Already, the legacy media is doing everything it can to discredit these parties. DW News is claiming these are the far right and the policies like don't import 500,000 immigrants a year are anything other than perfectly sane. The Brussels Times is claiming voting irregularities could lead to a revote or a recount because it's simply inconceivable to the media elite that normal people don't vote the same way that they do. Even the BBC is publicizing supposed Russian interference in the elections. Now, where have we heard that attack line before? And if, by some miracle, the Reform Party happened to win in the UK next month, do we imagine those who orchestrated the bankers' coup before will let this act of defiance by voters slide? Of course not. They'll do what they've always done and what they're doing right now. They will undermine the administration, destroy our economy, and spread smear campaigns across every media outlet across the world until their precious globalist interests are protected. But even if they succeed, that won't solve the fundamental problems. It will merely hide them for a few months until things return back to normality and voters once again resort to protesting with their vote, each time becoming more and more disenfranchised by the political system, more aggressive with their rhetoric and more impactful with their actions. Of course, rioting in France after the right won the election last week is not exactly indicative of what's going to happen everywhere immediately. It is France after all. There are always rioters as it's practically their national pastime. But the writing is well and truly on the wall. The political systems are going to be forced to change and every act of defiance by a political elite who seek to undermine democracy and have it act as an oligarchy are the very ones who are driving us towards this clip. If you have investments in Europe or the UK, firstly, I have to ask why the economy here is shot and our businesses are simply so consumed by bureaucracy that they're doomed to stagnation forever. But more seriously, take a long look at each of your holdings, consider how impactful they would be by the cheap migrant labor pool in Europe drying up. Consider how these businesses might suffer if bond yields are sent soaring in an attempt to oust a new radical government. We all know that the S&P 500 is the gold standard for investing, but many of the companies that make it up are really international and global institutions, not just America. If any individual stocks you hold do have considerable European exposure, take a look at the polling yourself. Take a look at how attitudes across Europe are changing. Take a look at the massive swing rightwards that has been seen across every European country. And also take a look at what's happened in the past when a real right-wing party has been elected. Look at the events following Liz Truss becoming prime minister. Look at Hungary, look at Poland, look at Italy, and decide for yourself whether or not you really want any exposure to the European markets as we go forward. Genuinely, I am worried for what's going to come, and I'm lucky enough to have this platform so I can at the very least get this information out there as best I can. The US elections are coming up shortly soon, and they will without a doubt follow a similar pattern, and in fact, they already are following that same pattern. But even with this platform, if I were unlucky enough to be stuck in the system, I wouldn't be able to speak to you like this. Too many people every day are threatened with the destruction of their personal lives by their employers for simply speaking their mind and as a result, they are forced into silence and obscurity. If that sounds like you and that's something you'd like to change, I'm running a free live class on Thursday where I show you how I make money online without this channel, without Stoic Finance, without showing my face, without anyone knowing my name through a business model called Growth Operating. It's 100% free and if you're interested, just click the link down below and follow the steps on the page to sign up and I'll see you on Thursday.